All right. It's been a minute. Hey, folks, I want to share with you today the progress. Uh, this is part two of my morgue build. Uh, and I want to share with you how I did the windows and the back wall uh, up to the point that I'm at now with the brick holes and the windows inserted into there. Uh, so this is part two. Part one was really just how to create the tile floor and the tile wall using spray paint uh, and um, some other techniques. But I'll link that in this video. If you haven't seen part one yet, go ahead, go back and check that out on how to spray paint XPS foam and create tile floor. But let's check out the video uh, on how I did the windows. So what I want to do here is I trace my windows out and you can see them there in the bottom of the screen. There's three windows. Uh, but it helps when you have a sharp blade. <laughs> so let's get a new one in there. Uh, I've already outlined them. So I'm going to go ahead and make multiple passes and cut uh, nice lines here in the front uh, of, on the outlines that I created for the windows. Um, and I chose to use three here because I want a lot of light to come into this dial. I want to be able to, you know, use my flashes and loom cubes and whatever other types of lighting. Uh, I want to be able to light the inside of this morgue uh, nice and creepily. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is once I cut through, I'll put my tip of my X-Acto knife through there and I'll mark holes with the Sharpie to uh, sort of mark the perimeter of the, the outline. And then I'll go through with a ruler and, and kind of connect the dots. And this works pretty well for creating nice tight holes. Um, you can use the tip of your X-Acto knife or you can use, you know, like a straight pin or something to put a hole through there and and make the, the holes to mark with the Sharpie. Uh, and, and when you've done it right, once you go through the back with your X-Acto knife and uh, you'll be able to feel a, just a tiny bit of resistance back there uh, and you know that your blade is in the uh, lines to cut. Uh, and there's a little bit of variance in this. and. And the more you take your time with it, the tighter the hole will be and the better the hole will be. Uh, you can see here we got a, a pretty dang good hole that goes right in there nice and snug. Uh, and I'm happy with it. You can go ahead and sand inside the hole if you want or, uh, you know, knock out some little burrs with a 3M scuff pad or whatever you want to do. But we got a nice tight fit right there and I'm happy with that. And we're just going to repeat the process on the other two holes. Um, couple things to note here uh, you want a tight fit on your windows um, because you don't want light leak but when you put windows in a house basically and I know this because I replaced all the windows in my house myself you've got a, a hole that's bigger than the window then you put the window in you shim it you fill it and you put your uh, you know uh, molding around the outside uh, your window stops and so it's the same kind of <laughs> kind of with doing it here on the dial you take your uh, y your window you you make a hole bigger than the window uh, you slide it in and and then you know later on you're gonna see we go around it with some stucco type material to create that uh, you know look where it's part of the concrete but but at any rate uh, you know this is this method here you, you really need a sharp uh, X-Acto knife or blade to make clean lines. Sometimes I do it better than other times. If you don't get it right, it's okay. But you want to make sure that you have a tight fit. Uh, if you have to knock some burrs out or you, you get a little few little raggly pieces on the inside of the hole, don't worry about that. You really want your front uh, hole, the front of the, the face uh, hole to have you know, single pass lines. You don't want that raggedy. You can have a raggedy back if that's how it ends up for you, but you want the front to look good. <laughs> so, uh, you know, don't think that, you know, I get it right all the time either because this, you know, uh, there's a, it just happens sometimes that, you know, we, we do better sometimes than we do other times. <laughs> so thank God for paint and, uh, you know, ways to, to mask it and, and make it look right, you know. I will say if you if you happen to cut too much out and your hole is too loose, you can add black Mod Podge on the inside there. If it's not like some big huge gap, I mean, uh, you know, you can add black Mod Podge to the inside of the hole or just, you know, um, regular Mod Podge. It doesn't have to be black, but I, I have black on hand and that's what I use. But, but uh, and what that does is it creates uh, 
a little bit of a layer inside there and it tightens the hole back up a little bit. You can, you know, you can put uh, um, paint in there. You can do Mod Podge. There's a couple different things. You can see I've got a little straggling piece there on the end. It happens, man. Uh, the hole is still tight uh, and I end up putting black Mod Podge later inside there um, just to be safe, but uh, it's not as tight as the first two, but it happens. It's not a big deal. You know, uh, but the front looks nice and clean and, and straight, and that's really what's important. Let's talk about how I got the windows to look like this. <laughs> and I 3D printed these windows. I modeled these in Fusion 360, and I do have the STL files available uh, on my website, insightfulimagery.com. I'll put the link in the video description down below. And I've got four windows printed here, but I really only wanted to use three. I just printed four because why not? <laughs> but uh, we've got a mixture of water and cheap Walmart Apple Barrel black paint. Uh, I did, I do need to mention that I did airbrush these uh, windows using Vallejo Gunmetal Gray uh, as the base color on these windows, and it's a really, it's a really nice color, man. I really like it. Uh, make sure that your paint. Uh, the, you know, the original base color that you paint these is thoroughly dry before you move on to the washing step. Uh, or um, once it's thoroughly dry, it's even better to go ahead and spray or paint on a little matte Mod Podge to seal that base uh, coat of paint up before you start putting watery, you know, watered down paints on top of that. You could run into washing some of the base layer of paint off if you're using all these acrylics and, and uh, you, you really want to avoid that. And you just take your black watered down paint and brush it on there, let it dry, get it in all the you know nooks and crannies, let the water evaporate and dry. And once that's done, then you can go ahead and add another layer of, um, I use an aerosol, an aerosol uh, Mod Podge uh, when I do this because I, I love it, man. They've got a gloss and they've got a matte and I, and I rely heavily on the matte uh, aerosol Mod Podge for stuff like this because it dries super fast uh, and it really is a matte finish and it seals up everything below it. So you can paint right on top of it and not worry about disturbing any of the paint or any of the debris that you've added to the window frames uh, and, it, and you can just keep on going layer after layer and it's really nice. And, and here all I'm doing is I'm using some acrylic, I'm not acrylic, but Vallejo pigments uh, to create these rusty colors. And I'm just adding it with some, uh, you see me dip my brush into the ice tray there and I'm just dipping it into some Vallejo airbrush thinner. And what that does is it, it sort of uh, makes the Vallejo rust pigments uh, into a, a paste that I can put onto the sashes of the window uh, there and create rust where I think rust would accumulate over time. And, um, you know, there's the, the pigment there. One of the rest pigments, they come in a set. I'll try to remember to link them in the video description down below. They come in a set of like three or four. Uh, I think it's three. No, it might be four. I don't know. It's three or four. <laughs> but they come in a set. You can get them on Amazon. Um, and it's, you know, it's a set for creating rust. And that airbrush thinner really helps make those pigments uh, able to be moved around and and brushed on and set them set them nicely onto the window uh, to where they dry and don't move um, and and I have the best of luck with that I've tried it with water and and I don't like the effect as much there's a couple of the, the paints uh, pigments there that create the rust so uh, now that we've done that <laughs> um, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you the airbrush uh, thinner bottle here, and you can get this on Amazon as well. Uh, there it is. I mean, it's it's a great product whether you're airbrushing with it or you, you're using it to you know set these pigments on your models. Um, it's you know great for that. And what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna go back through and do another black wash on top with the watered down uh, black paints, and that way we add another depth layer you know of depth to it and then I'll just flip them over let them dry and uh, now we're going to use another product this is called uh, this is made by AK Terrains and and honestly you can make this type of product a similar type of product yourself if you want to use you know uh, stucco or you want to use um, some type of finely gridded uh, 
you know, paste that you can come up with on your own. I use it because it's in a jar and I can open the jar and put it right on and get effects like this you see here in these photos. Um, and you can paint it whatever color you want. This is actually, oh, uh, let me back up. This is the Rust Corrosion from AK Terrains. And um, it is uh, a product that allows you to um, see this corrosion texture. It allows you not only to get the rust color, but the rust texture. So it's a raised up textured paste that really uh, gives you that added layer of, like I say, depth to the rust. Not only did you have the color, but you have the little gritty texture that the rust leave behind. And, and that's really a cool feature. So, uh, and you can make your own similar type of product. Here, I just get, you know, I go to this local store and I buy uh, remnants of plexiglass, different types and different patterns and different transparencies. Uh, and that's what this is here. It's a 10 mil thick piece of plexiglass that I'm going to be cutting and putting uh, behind my windows. I like it because it has this little ripple old style glass block sort of. Uh, you can't really see through it clearly, but light will pass through it super nice and give you this like a little blurry effect. And I, and I love it. And so I bought a sheet of this and it was like two bucks, man. And it just will last a long time because you can walk into this store uh, and and buy these remnants, uh, these, you know, leftover pieces of material for one or two dollars and come out with some great stuff, man, that you can use on your dials for doors and windows and tables and all kinds of other uh, things where you might need, uh, you know, clear plastic. So uh, I'm using a scoring tool right here and you you know, I just make multiple passes to get a nice scored line in there. Then we just snap it off there and uh, snap it off there. <laughs> and one more time, we'll make a couple more passes with the uh, tool. You, you don't want to try to force it because then it will break where you don't want it to break. So it's important just to go ahead and if it doesn't snap, just score it a few more times until it does snap easily. Uh, and, and that tool, um, it's made for cutting the plexiglass. It doesn't cut it, like I say, it just scores a line in it so that it snaps. Uh, and I think that was like three or four bucks or something. You don't want to try to do it with like a jigsaw or any of that stuff. It just, trust me, just, if you're going to do this, just buy the little four dollar tool. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work with a jigsaw, uh, very well. And another thing, when you cut this, it's really a good idea to cut it a little thinner than the window frame. These windows are two and a half by two and a half. So it's good to cut it a little to the inside um, so you don't have these pieces of plexiglass hanging outside of the edge of the window because remember you cut your holes based on your window size so you wanna keep everything pretty uniform. And if you happen to get the window a little bit bigger, you can just, you know, I've got a palm orbital sander that'll just uh, go ahead and, you know, I can knock it, knock it right down, but uh, I cut these pretty well here and I'm happy with them and and uh, they just man they just make a really nice window with that uh, with that plexiglass so here I want to take the hot glue and I just want to put it in the very corners you don't want to go along every sash and rib uh, because what happens is when you press that on there and the, and the hot glue spreads you're gonna see in your photos these little bits of hot glue that have come out from behind uh, the you know the pieces of the window frame and you don't want that so I just put it in the very corners and my window frames are fairly thick uh, so it will hide the glue nicely um, and then I press the plexiglass onto there and you don't see any of that uh, um, hot glue squeeze out from you know the back of the window frame there. Uh, these windows are two and a half by two and a half and I create the frame itself uh, at a half inch. So your typical dial panels foam, the XPS foam is one inch thick. So that gives you a quarter inch on each side of the front and back uh, piece of the XPS foam to create a window, uh, like a window sill if you want or, uh, or not. Um, and so you have the, you know, the ability to play around with it a little bit. Uh, and these are pretty detailed little windows. I, I totally dig them. And that hot glue, man, it's some, it just makes a stringy mess. <laughs> Sometimes it's a pain in the butt. That's the Gorilla Glue sticks. I like them, but it, they just get really stringy, man. And, and uh, 
I always got to watch, make sure there's no strings when I go to do my photographs or anything because man, one little string in there will just bug me. So let's talk about how I did these holes with the brick. Um, pretty cool. You can see how the window fit nicely in there. And now I want to make mention to here, you know, uh, that when you look at a concrete wall or, you know, an old stucco wall, you can see where they've replaced windows. There's different textures. There's different, uh, you know, holes and spots and, and crevices and uneven parts of the surface. You know, even in my own house, it built in 1940, uh, it's stucco on the outside, but you can see how, you know, over time and as you replace bits and pieces of your house, you know, there may be some varying textures in the surface. And so, uh, you know, what I did uh, when I put that window in there, um, you know, it, it made it, uh, I kept some of that old texture and stuff in there. It's pretty cool. But anyway, let's let's take a look and see how I did these knocked out pieces of brick. Uh, you just, I just randomly decided what size, you know, width and length I wanted. I figured I'd just cut some rectangles uh, and I was too lazy to get a ruler out, so I just used a scrap piece of plexiglass. <laughs> and shortcuts, man, shortcuts. Uh, and we're gonna cut out some rectangles. We're gonna try to use the same method that we did for the windows and try to get a nice, clean, uh, tight fit. The front doesn't have to be so clean because we're going to knock it out and, and chip it away. But the whole idea is that we want a tight fit because I'm gonna save that piece that I'm cutting out and it's gonna need to go back into that hole. So we wanna, we don't want a bunch of light leak coming from behind there and a bunch of gaps. So we're going to uh, use the same method, like I said, we did for the windows and just get our Sharpie out and go ahead and mark where the razor blade tip comes out and create our lines. And once we get all three of these done. Uh, you know, I was thinking of a way of how I was gonna make these. I've made other knocked out brick, you know, portions of wall before, but I've done them in different ways. And there's two ways off offhand that I know of that work best for me. Uh, this way here gave me the most depth without having to add anything to the surface of the wall. So um, this here kind of, it's it's the same kind of technique you do when like you make an industrial roll up door or something or, or just a regular door. You cut out the, the, the hole and then you recess the piece of foam a little bit and it creates that depth. It's the same, same idea here. Uh, see those pieces that I took out, you can see I've already go, uh, I went ahead and hand drew on some brick patterns there and uh, we're saving those and I'm just taking whatever tool I have on hand. Here it happens just to be a Phillips screwdriver. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm just, I'm gonna go through and take that rectangle and I'm going to change the uh, shape of all those hard lines that make the rectangle and just chip away, uh, chip away at it. And then we're gonna slide our piece in there, make sure we've got a good tight fit and just continue to chip away to expose some of the wall, uh, you know, as it, uh, as it would, you know, go down toward the brick. And, and I'm doing that on all three of the, the holes. So that's why I say in the beginning, it didn't matter if it was a nice, clean, straight rectangle because we're gonna change the shape of it. And later we're gonna change the shape of it even further by adding a, uh, some more AK Terrain's um, concrete mix in there. And, and that's going to even further take the rectangle down and change the shape of it to, you know, look more random. And so, just knock, I just knock all those bits of foam out of there. And I'm going to grab a 3M pad uh, and just kind of run it through the holes. Uh, it's kind of like a scratch pad. Uh, and I just run it through the holes just to clean off the whatever might be inside there. Just ream the hole out. There you go. And you can see the little bits of foam stick to the, stick to the uh, pad there. And, and that's the whole idea, just getting all those little bits and pieces out. Now, you do want... You know, the front side of this is sort of chiseled away and beveled out. The back side of this is still really nice and tight and those pieces are gonna fit back in there nicely. Um, and then we'll decide on a, you know, on a depth to hot glue them. I don't want them real deep, uh, but you're gonna see here. So, and that, that doesn't go there. There we go. <laughs> Get in the right hole. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, so it fits nicely in there. It, you, you can kind of see how this is making it look like, you know, with a few steps, how it's making it look like these, this concrete wall is painted gray and it's busted open and exposing some of the underlying brick below it. And that's kind of just what I'm after, you know, and there's, like I say, there's a few ways you can do this, but this to me w was the quickest, easiest way for this particular build. Uh, and you know, I think it looks pretty good. I just hand drew those bricks on there. Um, they didn't have to be all super scaled and, and everything, you know, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just putting something behind the foam in order to keep it raised up off the table so that I can just kind of loosely fit my windows in. And uh, I push the brick, those brick plugs that I made, I push those through a little bit to kind of get an idea of what depth I think they would look good at before I go to hot glue them in. And uh, that's kind of really what they are, just a plug. Uh, they just fit down into that hole and you're, uh, I push them in far enough to, to where I get the right, uh, the right look that gives me, uh, you know, how far back this wall is broken open and exposed to show the brick. And so it's kind of a cool way to do it. Um, it's a few steps involved, but like I say, I think it worked the best, uh, you know, it was the best uh, approach for this, for me uh, on this build and other builds I do it differently. It just, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. So now I will say that I did spray paint that gray on there. I textured it with aluminum foil and I spray painted that gray. Uh, then what I did is I black mod podged and painted those brick plugs. Now we're gonna put them into the hole. Uh, black mod podge inside the hole also really helps prevent any light leak. We're gonna hot glue those in place and um, at the right uh, depth that I want. So I'll push it down in there and I'll say, okay, it's far enough in and then I'll hot glue it. And then I'll take it a step further and I'll paint the hot glue black just to prevent later any light leak coming from behind. Because when I go to put lights back behind the wall to you know, shine through the windows, I don't want there to be any light leak coming through the brick holes. That would be, that's not what I want. Uh, so. Um, this is all just fit together super nice, man. I really am happy with the way this is turning out. Uh, sparingly a little hot glue in the back to keep the windows in place. And, and you can see all those holes have been filled with black Mod Podge. It just seals the, the foam uh, and it creates a nice tight fit um, in there where you cut these holes. Now I'll, I'll paint that, all that hot glue up around the edges too just prevent any type of light spill from coming through there. You know, when you use flashes, you'll find light spill. If there's a hole somewhere that you didn't catch, the flash will catch it. <laughs> you want to avoid light leak if you can. So at any rate, now here's another cool product. Uh, it's the same one I used earlier. It's AK Terrains. It's the concrete product. And what I'm using here, this is a, just a little clay, a clay tool. It's, it's a little plastic spatula. You can use it for painting. You can use it for clay, whatever. Um, but they're just little plastic spatulas and and uh, I'm just going over with the uh, AK Terrain's concrete and I'm filling in the gap and I'm sort of feathering it out. Uh, I don't sand it because I just don't think it's necessary. Uh, I'm gonna feather it out with a paintbrush and water. Um, it does leave, when I go to repaint it, it does leave uh, a visible area of texture below the new coat of paint and that's okay because like I say, if you ever look at buildings, you can see on the buildings where windows have been replaced and, you know, and, and stuccoed around and repainted over. And it just creates all these different layers of natural texture and natural, um, you know, distortion and, and form and, and just adds to the character of the building. Uh, but you can totally sand this stuff down if you want to and make it flat and flush. It's not a big deal, but I just didn't think it was necessary in this. Uh, and I just add a little paintbrush, uh, some water to that paintbrush and just feather it out, kind of fan it out and uh, make sure that there's no real super high raised edges. Uh, and I'll use the same technique here. Um, once I go back through and repaint everything, I masked everything off and re uh, spray painted that gray on there, that flat gray. Um, then I'll go back through and I'll add some 
not really white, but like a dingy grayish kind of white. Uh, these are just apple barrel paints that I mixed together and it just shows that the concrete is broken open and the brick is exposed below and then there's some of that white that, you know, is, uh, that the paint didn't get to as you break open the concrete, you know, you only, uh, and, and, and it's showing that. So there's like three layers going on there. Uh, it's the kind of effect that I'm after. But man, I'm thinking we're doing pretty good. Uh, and like I say, this is part two of this build. Uh, we'll walk through it again and take a look. This is part two. Uh, there's going to be more to come. If you haven't done so, please like and subscribe to the channel. All these props that you see, I model and 3D print these. I have STL files available. If you go to my website, insightfulimagery.com, uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram, uh, Etsy, TikTok, Facebook, all those cool places where toy photographers and diorama builders hang out. <laughs> and uh, at any rate, you folks take care. Thanks for looking and stay tuned for part three of this. And if you haven't done so, watch part one on how to spray paint your XPS foam. Take care.